Hi everyone, today I'm going to be going under the hood and reviewing Lenovo's ThinkPad P52S. This is Lenovo's most budget-friendly ThinkPad workstation with Intel's 8th generation Coffee Lake processor. This particular configuration includes an i7-8550U quad-core processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 512 gigabyte NVMe solid-state hard drive, and the base 1080p IPS display. This laptop also pairs well with Lenovo's Thunderbolt 3 docking station, which I'll touch on later. I also have a wireless mouse and keyboard hooked up. I'm going to go through the connectivity and general usability of the laptop, then I'll take off the back panel and show you the major components and upgrade options for each. I've also included some helpful links below if you'd like to learn more. It is worth noting that the P52S has the same hardware configuration as the T580 and will have the same internal layout. The build quality of the P52S is sturdy. It's over four pounds, but the sleek-ish design makes it feel significantly different than, say, the P51 or the P52. There's a nice big trackpad and track point buttons. Lenovo's kept the traditional track point stick. The keyboard includes a numeric keypad. It's a bit compact, but it works. Some users have complained about the offset keyboard, but I don't have a problem with it. Function keys are included on top for quick access to volume, brightness, external displays, etc. Lenovo now includes a privacy shutter on the webcam. You can slide it over the camera to physically block it. You no longer have to put a piece of tape or paper over the camera if you're concerned. On the left side, we have a USB-C connector, a Thunderbolt 3 USB-C that can be used for docking or power, fan exhaust, and smart card slot. No connectivity on the front. On the right side, there is an audio connector, an SD card reader, USB 3.1, an always-on USB 3.1, HDMI out, RJ45 Ethernet connector, and a security lock slot. There's no connectivity on the back and an external battery just underneath. Now let's look at some of the internal components. Anytime you're opening up the computer, make sure the battery is disconnected. First, disable fast startup in Windows by going to power options and making sure turn on fast startup is not enabled. This particular laptop has two batteries and you'll have to disable the internal battery via the system BIOS. Hit delete during the Lenovo startup screen and then F1 to enter BIOS setup. Going over to config, power, all the way down to the bottom and hit disable built-in battery. Hit yes and the computer will shut down. To remove the external battery, simply use the unlock tabs on both sides and slide the battery out. There's also a little tab over here by the Thunderbolt port. You'll want to take this off as well. There are eight screws holding the back panel in place. Unscrew these until they come loose. They're embedded in the base so they won't fall out. Now, I had a really hard time getting the base cover off. There's a little tab here, so you'll pull the tab, but what was difficult was getting the cover to detach from the base of the battery cutout. So I usually work around the edges like this until it pops off and then pull off this way. This will expose most of the components you'll ever need to access. There's the hard drive here, the internal battery, one dim of RAM, a second DIMM of RAM that is open for upgrading depending on how you ordered your laptop. The processor is here with the heatsink coming across. Here's the WAN slot. This laptop can be configured with cellular connectivity, but the slot also doubles as an SSD according to the maintenance manual. Lenovo can configure this with a 16 gigabyte Intel Optane drive for increased performance, but this wasn't available at the time I ordered. I did try to throw a 128GB M.2 SSD into the WAN slot, but it wasn't recognized by the BIOS or Windows even after I discussed with Lenovo tech support. This may have been fixed in a later firmware version, so please comment if anyone was able to get this to work. Here's your wireless card, your external battery slot. Let's take a look at the SSD. To take the hard drive out, pull on this tab here and there's a little bit of a lip. Gently pull the tab back and the enclosure should break free. There's a connection here, so be careful. We turn this over and you can now see the SSD. This laptop shipped in the spring of 2018 and included the Samsung PM981 NVMe SSD. If you're thinking of upgrading the hard drive, please note that if you purchased your laptop with a mechanical two and a half inch hard drive, you'll need a special SSD tray when upgrading to an NVMe solid state. I've put the link in the description below. 
it's pretty easy to put the cover back on. Start snapping it back around the base and then resecure all the screws. Put the battery back in and put this little tab back over here too. Since we disabled the internal battery, we need that power connected when we first want to restart the computer. I ran a few stock benchmark tools for this laptop. This mark was used to benchmark the SSD. These speeds are very similar to the Tom's Hardware Max speed testing of the PM981. PC Mark and 3D Mark were run for processing and graphic benchmarks. I paired this laptop with a Thunderbolt 3 docking station. There's a headphone and microphone connector, Thunderbolt 3 connector, and USB 3 on the front. On the back, you have Always On USB, another USB, Ethernet, another USB, VGA, two display ports, HDMI, another USB, and this is the Thunderbolt you'll want to connect to your laptop as it carries power. This is just the AC adapter here. According to the manual, this can't run two external 4K displays at 60 Hz, so please keep that in consideration when choosing monitors. That's it. Thanks for watching and please feel free to comment below.